Hi everybody, uh, before we get into this video, a quick update about my December tour. Uh, tickets are now available for Indianapolis, Atlanta, New York City, and Philadelphia. Uh, you can go to bandsintown.com slash Christopher Bill to get them. Uh, the link's right there in the description. So this week I'm doing one of my most requested tutorials. Uh, it's on the mask off challenge. Uh, I did this a few months ago, got almost a million views. Uh, uh, however, I just played over the actual recording uh, to do it and because of that there's some copyright restrictions it's not available in some uh, places uh, I don't know how that works so uh, I'm just going to play a little bit for you now So that's what we're doing today, and uh, it's a really fun exercise. There's a couple little tricks, uh, and then you can do the whole thing. Um, first of all, you have to be able to play those notes out of context. That's that's a good start. So it's a D minor scale. <laughs> and you actually don't need all of those notes. You just need A to A. So you don't really need. Then that's all you need. Uh, and even that, there's a couple of those that aren't in there. But let's go through it. So just D minor scale. D, F, G, A. So you skip the, the second note. Then F, G, D, F, G, A, F, G. And then we do a turn, G, A, G, F, E. And then we do another one, E, F, E, D, C. And end with a big A, D. It's all pretty much whole steps and half steps. Uh, okay. Uh, you don't want to miss uh, any of those little inner notes. Uh, so whether or not they, they come out exactly in tune or perfectly, uh, the, the, the timing of it is much more important. Much more important. Because uh, then you get that, that feeling of, of all of those little notes, those little grace notes in there, rather than uh, just a big blop, blop. I don't know. It's just, it's, you really want to make sure they're accurate, uh, at least with your timing. So, uh, let's talk about natural slurs because that is the overlying technique that, underlying or overlying? I don't know. Uh, technique that we use in this kind of playing because I only tongue maybe four notes in that whole thing, maybe five. So the F, G, A, I tongue, the, I tongue the D, and I tongue the F, and the G, A, bah, I don't do anything. I'll, I'll buzz it for you so you can you see what it sounds like. So uh, every time you hear a ta, ta, those are the only times my tongue is doing anything in that whole phrase. So that was, I don't know. It depends. There's a couple that I do sometimes. Most of the time, there's a whole bunch I don't. So, ta, 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 right? Ta, it's like, it's ta, 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 that's, I mean, if, when you hear this fast phrase, you think, how? How in the world are you tonguing everything that fast? No, I'm going ta, 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 which you can all do, right? Um, now, if I did tongue it, and it's important to be able to do it both ways. Uh, you don't want to only be able to do it one way because then 
Maybe the music calls for it the other way and you can't do it. You want to always <clears throat> use these exercises as a way to make sure you can do it in every style and every way. So if I tongued everything, <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. So, uh, yeah, let's try it again. So I can do it. Um, sounds really weird. Sounds like a march or a concerto or something, right? That's not the style we're going for. Uh, and so I use these natural slurs uh, to make sure I don't have to tongue it. What are natural slurs? It's switching between partials. Uh, so let's uh, go through them quickly one more time. So these are the first five partials. And each of those notes you can gliss down uh, and find other notes in all of the other uh, slide positions. So... Right? So you can gliss each of those notes all the way down. And that's how the trombone works. That's, that's the basics of it. So... Um, <clears throat> It doesn't mean you can only play these notes in one place because for example, let's say F in first position. It's the third partial in first position. It's the only where, place you can play that F on the third partial. But in sixth position, one, two, three, four, it's uh, the fourth partial based on F in sixth position, the third partial based on B flat in first. So, uh, you can actually do a natural slur as long as you're switching partials. So if I'm going from the third partial to the fourth, meaning uh, first position F to sixth position F, third partial to the fourth, one to six, you can actually do it without tonguing. Ridiculous and doesn't sound good because you're moving the slide six positions and an eighth note, but uh, that kind of drives home the point that you can play uh, a natural slur anywhere as long as you're switching partials. Same is true for uh, something that's further away. So that's the same note. You could also do like, um, uh, I don't know, a half step or a whole step. Minor third, I don't know. Like all of those, I'm not tonguing. As long as your, your lips are doing the right thing and your slide's doing the right thing, it'll happen. So, make your lips do the right thing and make your slide do the right thing, and this will happen. So, D, F, G, A. I go ta, ta. The F, G, A, I tongue the first one, the rest of them come out. Then I go. Sometimes I make those articulate, so I do tongue both of those. You don't have to. And then after that, G, A, G, F, E. You have to tongue the E at the end of that because it's uh, in the same partial as the F. If I didn't, it would gliss. Right? So not tonguing anything, there's only one that doesn't work. Right? So you have to go ta, ta, rather than ta, if that makes sense. Um, However, for sake of argument and exercise and knowledge, uh, we can play those in a different place on the horn. I think it sounds better there by just tonguing the last note. Uh, but let's say you wanted to find a place where you could play it using alternate positions uh, to make sure you don't have to tongue anything. We can do that, especially up in that register where there's more places to play these things. So it's G-A-G-F-E. And the G is the, let's see, G is the seventh partial in second position. Seven, okay? Um, so we go seven, uh, well, G, A, G, F, E. Seven, eight, seven, <laughs> six, six, if we're talking partials. Uh, so... Uh, what you, we want to do is find a place where it skips every single time. And what we can do is move them all 
up one partial and play them someplace else. So you can play G in fourth position, and instead of the seventh partial, it'll be the eighth. Eight, right? So with that, we can play G, uh, let's see. So all in fourth position, we could go eight, nine, eight, seven, six, and still play that E in, a, in a, the sixth partial second position. It's a little confusing when I'm talking about partials and positions, uh, but bear with me. So that's going four, 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 two, as far as positions are concerned. Partials, you're going eight, nine, eight, seven, six. And all that means is you don't have to tongue any of it. Right? So you can do it. Uh, you can probably find a place to do it lower on the trombone as well. Uh, and so when we look for alternate positions, it's only to make it easier uh, on yourself. If you find that easier and it sounds just as good, do it. Hopefully you understand how these natural breaks uh, kind of work. Let's take it nice and slow and let's do the whole thing. <clears throat> D, F, G, A, F, G, G, A, G, F, E, E, F, E, D, C, A, D. Do that. Don't miss any of those little inner notes. And practice, I don't know, something like this. Not tonguing any of them. Uh, that's something that I would put in my morning routine if this is something I really wanted to learn how to do. Uh, it's basically the, the way I would explain it best as far as a feeling, uh, musical style and uh, technique. It feels like when a guitar player uh, plays something without like a hammer on, right? Uh, without strumming. Uh, and all of a sudden the rhythm is not coming from this hand. It's coming from this one, which is usually just, you know, setting up the notes and then you play them. Uh, it's similar with this. This hand is now <laughs> all of a sudden, or maybe just your lips, uh, but in conjunction, that's, those are the ones that are, are making the rhythm rather than your tongue. Your tongue or your right hand is no longer doing anything. Uh, and the rhythm has to come from the technique. So that's kind of how I feel about natural slurs. It's, um, there's no room to hide in them. Uh, you're gonna hear everything and you can't stop the air. That's, that's the rule. Once you get used to playing this kind of thing, you can perhaps speed it up. And it, it's really much easier to speed this stuff up because there's nothing in the way at that point. Ridiculous again, but uh, for sake of exercise and practice, uh, could be useful. Also useful though, take it super down tempo and make sure that you can play these beautiful natural slurs. Right, so these are the things you should practice. Uh, that's how we do it. Don't miss any of the notes. Uh, make sure the rhythm is in your uh, lips and your hand. Uh, you can practice buzzing it. 
and as long as you're buzzing it correctly and your slide is in the right place, it will happen. Those are the only two things that need to happen for this technique. It's uh, very exciting. It gets the tongue out of the way. So I hope this was helpful and informative. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, uh, if you like this kind of thing. I do a new video every Saturday. I have an album. It's called Half Man, Half Machine. It's available on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Uh, and it sounds a little something like this. Thank you.